What is up guys, it's Briggs here, and like always, welcome to All Day Anime. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about The 7 Deadly Sins Season 2 Episode 1. And honestly, I'm extremely impressed. It was a very well-structured episode and a good way to start off the second season. To begin, I just want to briefly talk about the structure of the episode before I go into depth with exactly what happened throughout the episode. It starts off within a dream, within Elizabeth Leone's dream, a great way to start the episode, foreshadowing what it will happen throughout the episode and throughout the season. And then after that, we get a light-hearted, fun introduction to the Seven Deadly Sins within the Borhat Bar. They remind us what happened last season, how the Seven Deadly Sins saved the Kingdom of Leones. Um, and then they remind us they remind us of this through an award ceremony, giving them like medals of honor type of thing. They give us a nice little action fight scene to keep us interested throughout the ceremony. The story isn't completely linear. We're getting a nice little side plot between Bond and King, and that's something I really like. And then they end the episode off by introducing the Ten Commandments, which are the new enemies of the season, teasing you and making you want to watch the next episode. And honestly, structure-wise and introduction-wise, great first episode. It got me so pumped up, I wish I could just binge watch all the episodes right now. And on that note, before I go into depth, there are a lot of things I do want to talk about about the episode, but before I get into that, the, sh the season is confirmed to have 24 episodes. I read that it would be on Netflix today, and um, it would be uploaded weekly according to the official Seven Deadly Sins website, but I don't know if that's just referring to like the Japanese Netflix, like we really don't know anything for sure, so I'm hoping it comes out today. But as of right now, it's still not on Netflix. I'm never one to like condone illegal streaming, but I know myself, I pay for Crunchyroll, I have Netflix, and I even have Amazon Prime, so now that they're taking down the paywall for Amazon, for like Anime Strike, I'm gonna have that service as well. Like I'm clearly like supporting the anime community, but honestly, if they're not providing me the product, they're not providing me the anime, I don't feel bad about illegally streaming like this show for, show, for example. Like there's no way I'm gonna wait four months for it to be on Netflix type of thing. So I'm not going to tell you guys where you can watch it, like I don't want to give any individual site revenue type of thing, but um, you guys are smart, uh, you, can, you can just google that shit. But anyway, before I begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to my buddies over at Anime Uproar. They're making a video talking about all the members of the 7 Deadly Sins, and I honestly think you guys will enjoy this video, so definitely check it out, I'm going to be linking it down below. Um, but without any more delay, let's talk about the episode. Like I said before, the episode starts off with Elizabeth Leonez, like in her dream, and much like King Leonez, it hints that Elizabeth has the power to see the future. So her dream heavily foreshadows what's to come. So in the dream, you see King and Bond leaving, you see these black figures that uh, Meliodas is fighting, foreshadowing the commandments, the enemies of the season, and then you see that Elizabeth joins Meliodas on a journey to the self. So you can assume that's like potentially where the season may be going, maybe they're gonna be traveling somewhere to maybe fight the commandments for example, um, or they have some type of business in the self. And then after that we get to see the Seven Deadly Sins, it was a nice little fresh introduction to them again. It was really awesome to see them in the bar, um, just goofing around having fun. And then, like I mentioned before, the king wants to give medals of honor to the Seven Deadly Sins for their uh, for saving the kingdom at the end of the last season, a nice little refresher. Vaughn tells Meliodas that he's leaving the Seven Deadly Sins, and you could su assume it has something to do with Elaine, as that's really the only thing Vaughn is interested in. Vaughn likes drinking, he likes Meliodas and Hawk, but more than anything, he loves Elaine, so you can assume it has um, something to do with Elaine. If you recall, last season he was trying to find a way to revive her and bring her back, so it's likely something like that. And then when he later leaves, King follows and asks where he's going, and to our surprise, Bond says the Fairy King Forest, which was destroyed 10 years ago. So of course, out of curiosity, King continues to follow him, and that like proves the first part of Elizabeth's dream to be true. And so like we get this little side plot going on with King and Bond that I'm sure is going to continue throughout the story, or at least at the beginning of the story. Personally, that's something I really like. Like I don't like stories that are very linear and just have one focus. Like having a nice little side plot or a B plot, for example, is something that I really like in a story. It gives something else to offer and allows other characters to have time to develop and like have time to shine, for example. Other than just seeing Melio just go off and like kill people over and over again or wreck people over and over again. But then on the main storyline, they are being given awards and Meliodas realizes that some people are unhappy, so he objects to his own award, classic Meliodas. But yeah, we get a cool little fight. Of course, it's completely one-sided. Basically, some of the Holy Knights were like that were stationed outside of the Kingdom of Leones during the fight 
didn't have an opportunity to see um, Meliodas in battle or even fight in this like Holy War for example uh, fight in this battle so they wanted to see if he's like worthy of all this honor like to be honest when you look at Meliodas, Gother and like Merlin they don't really look like fighters and strong forces so I could see how they would be doubtful like Meliodas looks like he's like 10 years old like so I could see how they would be doubtful like that these guys are so strong and they saved the kingdom the only person that kind of looks competent there is Diane because she's huge and like I said before, Bond and King aren't at the award ceremony. They got that A1 side plot going on. Uh, we don't actually know what's happening yet, but I have a feeling it's gonna be really cool. But yeah, it was a completely one-sided fight. Meliodas like completely wrecked the guy and proved their strength. Another really cool part of the episode was that Merlin gave Hawk Baylor's power eye. It's like a magical item earring type thing that gives Hawk the ability to see power levels. It's over 9,000! And then power levels in the Seven Deadly Sins can be further broken down into three categories, magic, physical strength, or force, and spirit. For example, Merlin would be very proficient in magic, but not so much in physical strength, while the opposite would be the case for Dian. Everyone who was at the award ceremony had their power levels revealed. Meliodas was 3,370, uh, Gother was 3,100, Dian was 3,250, and Merlin was 4,700. There's an ongoing joke about a uh, hawk being 3,000, but like times 100, so like it's actually 30. Um, and like I said before, Bon and uh, King weren't there, but Gother did mention that all the seven of these sins are above 3,000, so you know that King and Bon are both above 3,000 as well. It's important that like combat class and power levels, like they, they're not like one number; they change according to situations and conditions. So you know, if you're screaming for 20 episodes straight, that's gonna make your power level go straight up, uh, Goku. Um, or like, for example, say like your loved one gets killed in front of you or gets attacked, you're like gonna wanna protect them. Or if you're in a situation of life and de death, you know how like people, like humans, are able to find like insane strength during those times. So they can probably like increase their power levels and power up depending on the situation. That's what Gother is basically saying. And then the episode ends with the Coffin of Eternal Darkness being opened uh, by Hendrickson and Dreyfus. Uh, something I want to point out, Dreyfus refers to the Ten Commandments, the Demon Clan, as my people, insinuating that he is one of them. Remember Dreyfus, he's Grimoire's dad. So we obviously know something is up, something's going on. Like we see the mark on him and stuff like that. And then like, Based on how he was referred to before, he seemed like he was a nice guy, like Meliodas were like referred to him as a friend and like a good person. And it just feels like something, you, you know something's up here, something's not right. And then the episode ends with us seeing a commandment that looks like identical to uh, Meliodas, only having like dark features instead of light features. And then the episode ends with him saying, it's been 3000 years and you're still alive, Meliodas. Um, so it was a great way to end the episode, got me really pumped up and excited for the next episode. Like I said, I wish I could just binge watch them all now. Just please, just, like, even if you don't drop all 24 episodes on Netflix, like, weekly on Netflix would be amazing. Like, I want to support the series. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my review. Subscribe for more reviews weekly. It was, like, I really don't do reviews. That's not really my thing normally, but I do want to try it out. So let me know what you thought down below. Give me some construction... Give me some constructive criticism. I'm open. Uh, I'm open for it. Before I end the video, I want to answer one of your questions. Sorry, it's got to lean forward here. I can't see the question. Uh, what's a place you'd like to visit in the future? Greetings from Germany. I highly adore your content. Thank you so much. Hello, Kevin Shader. Um, a place I want to visit in the future, like honestly I could use a vacation so anywhere like nice with the beach would be awesome But like more specifically um, Probably Japan being like interested in anime for like 10 plus years now Like you, you like you develop you develop like respect and like curiosity for the culture so visiting there and like uh, Like seeing different like tourist attractions and just taking in the culture like eating the food and stuff like that is something I definitely want to experience at one point in my life I hope that was a decent enough answer for you. But anyway, that is the end of this video. And just like that, I will see you guys all next time, dudes. Shinpaku. Ba-ba-bang.